Another important thing to know about our binomial distribution is the shape of the probability mass function when we graph it out. Uh, we've seen like how to graph it out with just general situations. We know that uniform basically always looks like a box, uh, but there are a couple of distinct shapes that a binomial distribution can look like. And it's all really based upon like the number of trials that are happening and the probability of success. Okay, so I'm going to show three kind of possible options where you might see what the probability um, mass function graphs out to be in a binomial situation. Okay, so let's talk about our basketball example again. We'll say like shooting free throws. And we'll do 10 shots. And we will have the probability of six. So that's our n. And we'll have our probability of success being 50%. We'll also have one being at like 90%. And we'll have one at like 10%. All right, so we'll have this be like pi 1, we'll have that guy be pi 2, and we'll have that guy be pi 3. All right, and we're going to do graphs of the probability density functions roughly for what those guys are supposed to look like. All right, so it's not the probability, sorry, we're plotting out the probability mass function. So our P, M, F. All right, and then on the bottom is going to be our support. So we'll have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So that's going to be all of our possible outcomes. And we go from 0 to 1 as our uh, possible probabilities. Okay. Now, when we do this, it's going to look something like this. Where, so let's take this 0.5 for the first one. Uh, the probability of 0 is going to be pretty low. And then the probability of 1, kind of like this. And then it's going to go up and up and up. And maybe something like this. And then it's going to kind of start to come on back down. something like this. And if you look at it, it kind of looks like a bell shape. And we're actually going to be able to utilize that fact later on in class, where how the binomial distribution kind of looks like a normal distribution uh, in certain scenarios. OK, so that's one option. So this is with like a probability of success of pi equals like 0.5. Now, uh, I haven't drawn it perfectly to scale. I've got this uh, a little bit too scrunched. Let me, let me erase this. For the scale that I've got this drawn at, this would be something closer to like uh, point, I don't know, like 0.75 or something. So, and you're like, why did you just change that number? I, I don't understand. Well. If we were to stack all of these little pieces on top of one another, uh, they should stack out to be equal to 1, because that's what a probability mass function, if we add up the masses of the probabilities of each of these outcomes, they should stack up to 1. And I probably still have it a little bit too small. But you, you get the idea. So what's nice is that just from our probability mass function, if I wanted to know what's the probability of being 3 or less, so right, so let's say I wanted to know the probability of making 3 or fewer shots. So our random variable, me shooting free throws, is we'll say less than or equal to 3. Well, I could just come here and I could see, hey, I am now interested in just, well, let me use a different color, just this section, the probability of, nope, not that section, one more. We got to capture three as well. The 
the sum of those pieces. So graphically, we kind of see that it's, you know, we take those four pieces, and that would be the probability of being less than or equal to three. So we can kind of use the graphic. We can see what, what it is, what these probabilities are. We can visually see them stacking up, and then the probability of being less than or equal to three is that. Now, if we were interested in the probability of being greater than three, it would be the sum of all of these guys stacked up on, on top of one another, and that would be that probability. Okay, so this is one iteration of how this can look. Okay, let's look at what happens if our probability of success is really, really high, like 90%. All right, well, when that happens, this is what we're going to get. So I'll put a probability mass function where pi equals 0.9. And we're still going to do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, so we've got our numbers. We're going to start at 0, and I'm going to go all the way up to 1. And I'm going to put a little break right here, because I know I'm not going to draw it to scale correctly. Um, but let's kind of just see what we would see. Okay, so if the probability is in fact 90%, uh, it's going to be way, way more likely that we are getting something kind of like in the 9 and 10 range. So 9 might be like all the way up here. Notice that there's a break. This is not all the way like 100%. I don't know what this probability is. I'd have to go and calculate it from those big equations that we had before, but I could totally calculate that. And then 10 is probably going to be a little bit less. And then 8 is going to be kind of like here. 7 here, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and something like that. All right, so this is kind of cool. Like, it's kind of all like skewed to the left, where it's like we're way more likely to make a bunch of free throws and not very likely to make like not very many. So let's say I'm an excellent free throw shooter. Um, you know, somebody like, I don't know, Stephen Curry or something, uh, we would, you know, is it possible for him to step up to the free throw line and miss 10 free throws in a row? Yeah, it's possible, but the likelihood of it happening is very, very small. It's way more likely that, you know, some elite free throw shooter in the NBA is going to make most of his shots. Okay, so we've seen how this binomial could kind of look like a normal distribution. We also have another one where it doesn't look. It's got this kind of like heavy left skew. Well, if we have a probability of success that is very small, uh, we can see yet another distribution. So once again, let's go ahead and kind of do this guy. We'll break it, have one be there, zero be there, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And so the probability of success is here very, very small. So let's go ahead and be like, okay, so this guy is going to be really high. This guy's going to be kind of high, kind of high like that. I don't know if I did a very good job, but these pi 2 and pi 3, they're just the complements of one another. Did you notice that? How it's really, I just kind of flipped how these probabilities are actually, uh, how they look like. So this one, we've got where this is our PMF, where pi equals 0.1. We've got a large probability of not making very many free throws and a low probability of making a lot of free throws. So we can see how the distribution of a binomial, it's not like constant in how it looks. It's not like a uniform. Uniform is kind of that box the whole time. Uh, but a binomial is kind of flexible in, in how it looks. And we can also take these graphics and we can actually visually see 
what these probabilities uh, actually mean. It's, you know, it's the sum of each of these little posts. And anyhow, that is some of the possible shapes that we can see with our binomial distribution.